from St Michael's. Um, those of you who've been following me with night prayer will know that um, I share things from the Celtic tradition and that is what I'm hoping to do this morning. I want to share some, some music, some prayer and some reflection which I'm hoping that you will find useful. So these prayers are taken from the Northumbria Celtic Daily Prayer, Book One. Let thy face, O Lord, shine forth upon us, and be thou merciful unto us. The peace of God, and of Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, be upon us for evermore. I do not think that I shall fear thee when I see thee face to face. Thou art our trust, O King of Kings. I pray that no envy and malice, no hatred or fear may smother the flame. I pray that indifference and apathy, contempt and pride may not extinguish its light. Be with us by day, be with us by night. And as darkness covers the earth, keep our lights shining brightly. We are on a journey, for our hearts have run before us to your kingdom. Once far off, we have now been brought near. See how good and joyful a thing it is to dwell together in unity. I want to share with you a reflection from William Seacart's 
poetry pharmacy. This is another book that I often use at night prayer. And this reflection is on feeling despair at the world. And it precedes a poem called Don't Hesitate by Mary Oliver. In this choking world, directed down all the wrong roads by our strutting and flapping politicians, life can seem irredeemably gloomy. What scraps of joy we find may come to feel incongruous and unwelcome, like the smile one must smother at a funeral. What right have we to be happy, we may ask, when so many are miserable? As Mary Oliver acknowledges in this poem, the world can be a bleak place. There are almost certainly lives and towns being destroyed at this very minute, and to pretend otherwise would be to patronise not only ourselves, but also those who are suffering. We have plenty of reasons too to feel insecure, both in our futures and in our own capacity to be kind and to face heart in the face of hardship. But, says Oliver, we don't have to dismiss these concerns to be able to find joy in life. Joy can take us by surprise. It crops up in the least expected places, like a poppy on a battlefield. No wonder then that we do not always know how best to welcome it, and may even feel tempted to diminish it with rationalisations or to dismiss it altogether. In part, perhaps, we feel that we do not deserve joy. In part, we may be embarrassed to take pleasure in things that others are denied. But joy, like love, is not a zero-sum game. The greater the quantity of joy in the world, the greater the world becomes. So remember that joy is the most persistent weed on earth. When it comes, it brings with it abundance and kindness and recovery. Forgive yourself for yearning for happiness and allow it to grow huge and healthy inside of you when it comes to visit. Joy is not a crumb. It is a seed. And when you tend it, the world itself thrives. Don't hesitate by Mary Oliver. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate, give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. My dogs as ever are joining in with us this morning. But I feel that There is joy and there is despair and they're currently living alongside each other. And if we just dwell on one and not the other, then we're we're losing half the picture. If we're only seeking the joy that we can find, then we miss those who are in despair and we miss the opportunity to help lift others out of that despair if we're able to. 
and if we only concentrate on the despair we miss out on so much joy and they're both there as they always are side by side in our world. These short intercessions were published last Sunday by Nadia Boltzweber. When God, who is called by many names, how long, O oh Lord? How long until we can touch our parents and beloved elders? And we thank you for each day that we have had with them. How long until we can have things in our calendar to look forward to that don't involve staring at a computer? And we thank you for the abundance of celebrations and movies and live music and meals with friends that we have been granted up until a few months ago. How long until we can gather together again to sing your praise? And we thank you for calling an assembly in the streets to overturn the tables of injustice and racism. How long until the dying ceases, the brutality ends, the anxiety abates? How long, O oh Lord? I'm not asking for a date. I'm asking for the faith that a date will come. Amen. I'm just going to share with you one final prayer from the Northumbria community before I share a final piece of music and I'll move back so that we can just reflect upon the cross. Allow more and more thoughts of your thinking to come into our hearts, O Lord, day by day till there shall be at last an open road between you and us, and your angels may go up and down amongst us, so that we may be in your heaven, even while we are upon your earth. Amen. Sure.